The overall goal of the following experiment is to follow the uptake of mitochondria into the vacuole as a means of studying the autophagy of mitochondria, a process known as mitophagy. This is achieved by expressing in yeast cells a genetically encoded and mitochondrially targeted dual emission fluorescence pH biosensor named MT Rosella that labels mitochondria with red and green fluorescence. As a second step, yeast cells are subjected to nitrogen starvation in order to induce mitophagy. Next, we view cells by fluorescence microscopy or confocal laser scanning microscopy in order to visualize uptake of mitochondria into the vacuole. Results are obtained that show accumulation of red but not green fluorescence in the vacuoles of nitrogen-starved cells, indicative of mitophagy. Scoring of cells in a population allows the degree of mitophagy to be determined. Using Rosella to monitor the uptake of mitochondria into the vacuole of yeast cells can provide mechanistic insights into the process of mitophagy. The approach can be adapted to monitor the autophagy of other cellular compartments, such as the nucleus. Demonstrating the procedure will be Dalibor Mialika, a postdoctoral researcher from our laboratory. In this protocol, we use wild-type strain BY4741 and a deletion mutant strain, Delta ATG3, derived from the same genetic background. To visualize the localization of mitochondria in these strains, they are labeled with a fluorescent reporter, Rosella. Rosella is a dual-color emission biosensor comprising a relatively pH-stable red fluorescent protein and a pH-sensitive green fluorescent protein. The mitochondrial target sequence is used to target the Rosella biosensor to the mitochondrial matrix. This reporter has been named MT Rosella. At high pH, the biosensor fluoresces both red and green. However, at low pH, it fluoresces only red. The wild-type strain is a control to indicate the levels of mitophagy normally expected. As a negative control, a strain null for the expression of an essential autophagy gene is suitable since such a strain cannot deliver mitochondria to the vacuole. Standard procedures are used to transform the yeast strains with a plasmid carrying the mitochondrially targeted Rosella reporter. Growth plates are incubated for 2 to 4 days at 28 to 30 degrees Celsius until the appearance of colonies about 2 to 3 millimeters in diameter. To grow cells for induction of mitophagy, Inoculate for each strain a single yeast colony into 10 milliliters of growth medium containing a non-fermentable carbon source, in this case ethanol, and the appropriate oxytrophic supplements. Duplicate cultures are grown for each strain, resulting in a total of four cultures. Incubate yeast cultures for approximately 48 hours at 28 to 30 degrees Celsius with orbital shaking, by which time the culture should be in the mid-log phase of growth. At the end of the incubation period, transfer two 1 mL samples of each culture into 1.7 mL snap cap plastic centrifuge tubes. Gently pellet the cells by centrifugation at low speed. After centrifugation, carefully remove and discard the supernatant from each tube without disturbing the cell pellet. Wash the cells with 1 mL of sterile distilled water by resuspension followed by centrifugation. Repeat the wash two more times to remove residual medium. After the third wash, resuspend the cells in either 100 microliters of growth medium or nitrogen starvation medium. Nitrogen starvation medium contains the carbon source ethanol but lacks nitrogen supplements and will induce mitophagy in cells. Next, re-inoculate the resuspended cells into 10 milliliters of fresh growth medium or 10 milliliters of nitrogen starvation medium. Incubate the cultures with orbital shaking for 6 to 12 hours. After the induction of mitophagy, it is useful to confirm the delivery of MT Rosella to the vacuole under the fluorescence microscope. 
The vacuole can be located by labeling using a coumarin-based blue fluorescent dye, such as 7-amino 4-chloromethylcoumarin L-arginine amide, CMAC arg for short. Labeling with CMAC arg does not need to be performed routinely, but it is recommended for those who are not familiar with the location and appearance of the vacuole in yeast. To begin the procedure for labeling the vacuole, Transfer 1 ml samples of each culture into separate 1.7 ml snap cap plastic centrifuge tubes. Then add CMAC ARG to each tube. Incubate the tubes at 28 to 30 degrees Celsius with orbital shaking for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, pellet the cells by centrifugation. Discard the supernatant. Wash the cells with 1 ml of sterile distilled water by resuspension, followed by centrifugation. Wash the cells two more times with sterile distilled water. This step removes residual medium and excess CMAC ARG dye. After the third wash, resuspend the cells in 100 microliters of sterile distilled water. The cells are now ready to be mounted for imaging by fluorescence microscopy. When carrying out this protocol, it's very important to use freshly transformed yeast cultures to ensure you obtain yeast cells with highly fluorescent mitochondria. To prepare live yeast cells for imaging by fluorescence microscopy, first melt 2 mg of low melting point agarose in separate 1 ml aliquots of growth medium and nitrogen starvation medium by incubating at 70 degrees Celsius for 1 hour. The molten agarose is maintained at 70 degrees Celsius. To mount the cells, spot 20 microliters of molten agarose onto a labeled 76 by 26 millimeter glass microscope slide. Immediately spot 10 microliters of the washed cell suspension onto the agarose bed. Cover the agarose bed with a 22 by 22 millimeter glass cover slip. The cells will spread across the agarose surface beneath the cover slip. Then carefully seal the edges of the cover slip with a thin film of nail polish. This will prevent dehydration and movement of the cover slip during imaging. When the nail polish is completely dry, the slides are ready to be viewed by fluorescence microscopy. Cells mounted using this technique can be observed for up to one hour after mounting without any apparent adverse effects on cells. Since yeast cells are relatively small, you will need a good quality fluorescence microscope equipped with excitation emission filters suitable for the separate visualization of GFP emission and RFP emission, and a 60x water immersion objective lens with a numerical aperture of 1.2. Typical results obtained using MT Rosella expressed in wild type cells and using confocal laser scanning microscopy are shown here. Under non-starved conditions with ethanol as a carbon source, wild-type cells exhibit a typical cellular distribution of mitochondria at the periphery of the yeast cells that show both red and green fluorescence. Red and green fluorescence emission is not detected in the vacuole. When MT rosella expressing wild-type cells are subjected to nitrogen starvation for six hours and beyond, they exhibit, in addition to red and green fluorescence corresponding to mitochondria, the accumulation of red but not green fluorescence in the vacuole. This vacuolar signal is indicative of mitophagy, the autophagic uptake of the mitochondria. Vacuolar localization of rosella can be separately confirmed using CMAC ARG. In contrast, mitophagy negative control cells expressing MT rosella observed before starvation and following six hours and beyond of starvation show no accumulation of red fluorescence in the vacuole while mitochondrial labeling remains strong. To assess the level of mitophagy in the wild type and ATG3 mutant strains, greater than 200 cells per strain were observed for accumulation of red fluorescence in the vacuole before the induction of mitophagy and at selected time points following induction of mitophagy. Plotting the proportion of cells showing vacuolar accumulation reveals that the degree of vacuolar uptake increases with time in wild-type cells, but not in Delta ATG3 mutant cells that cannot deliver mitochondria to the vacuole.
After its development, this technique paved the way for researchers in the field of autophagy to explore the delivery of mitochondria and other organelles, such as the nucleus to the vacuole, under various growth conditions in yeast cells.